Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Slides to create a newsletter for your classroom or school. I've had several teachers ask me what they could use as a replacement for Microsoft Publisher or any number of other editing programs they might have used on a Windows-based desktop. So I have a great way of using Google Slides, so let's take a look at a way to do that. So open up Google Slides and select a blank presentation. Then select a blank page, which allows you to create completely from scratch. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is change it into an actual newspaper form, which would mean it needs to be portrait and not landscape, but there's no native option for changing this in Google Slides. However, what we can do is click on the File menu, navigate down to Page Setup, and choose Custom. Then just set the size to 8.5 by 11. And then when you hit OK, you'll notice that it turns into the type of page that we want. Now you do have the option of working with pages like this default one, but I prefer to start from scratch, which is why I have the blank page here to get started. So I'm going to start with a title box by adding a text box, and I'm going to put in the name of a fictional school that I'm inventing for the purposes of this project. And then I will also make note of the date. You can go in here after you've done all the typing, and then make it as big as you want so it stands out. Center it, and then to make sure this stands out as the title, I'm going to come over here and add a line that encompasses it all. And then make it a big line to make sure it stands out. So now you've got your basic newsletter headline. You can change the color of the line if you want, or edit it however else you want. Now I want to add my first article. So I'm going to insert a text box, size it a certain way that I like, and now I'm going to go to some of my already set up samples that I have for text. Well, I'm just going to copy and paste that into there. It's just some random text, but this is where you would add any story that you'd like to highlight within your school newsletter. Often, you're going to want to add a picture to go with a story. So what you do is go to Insert and choose Image. You have many different options here. You can go to a URL. If you have your own images, you can get them from here or you can go to search, and search for an image right from this interface. So let's imagine that we're writing a story about a school basketball team. So I'm going to search for an image of basketball. I'm just going to keep it simple and select this, and then insert it. It will likely insert way too large for the slide, but I'm just going to resize it so it makes more sense in the context of the page. Now as I start to reposition this, you'll notice one of the things that I love about Google Slides which is how it shows you if and how various elements are lining up on the page as you reposition them. Notice that line here, which is what tells me that this image is centered on the element right above it. If you notice as I move it, it gives you different options that show you different types of information to help you find the optimal position for any element. So let's create another text box, and this time add it over here to the right of our image. Now if you notice, it shows you that it's about the same height as the text box up top. So if you want to keep your spacing and everything the same, that's a great way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in some text from another source and paste it into this text box. Let's imagine that this story is about a successful fundraiser done by some students at our school. Again, we want to find a way to keep this as interesting as possible for our readers. So we're going to go to Insert Image again, and this time search for Toys for Tots. Here's a good image right off the start, which we can insert. Once again, the image starts huge, but we can make it smaller, and then bring it over here. You're going to see that red line again, which this time means that the top of the image is in line with the top of this other text box here helping us to create a well-aligned and attractive-looking newsletter. So I'm going to position that there, and then I'm going to click on my text box here in order to adjust its positioning. Eventually, we'll get a red line going both horizontally and vertically, letting me know that I'm centered on both images, helping to keep our newsletter nice and organized-looking. Now I want to add another piece of text, so I'm going to put the text up here, and I can see that it's about the same size, and I'm going to pull in some more text from somewhere else. This story is about an upcoming winter break. So it's time to search for an image again, and this time we'll search for schools out, and see what comes up. This time it didn't come up with anything that I'm happy with, so I'm going to search for winter break instead. And now I have some better images to choose from. 
I like this one. So I'm going to have to resize it yet again and try to position it under this story and beside this other one. Finally, I want to add one small element at the bottom, a notes section, encouraging people to email the teacher coordinating the newsletter if they would like to be part of the newsletter staff. I'm going to pull this in from another source again, but it's going to end up a little smaller than I want it to be. I'm going to enlarge it and then center it. I also want this to stand out a little bit, so I'm going to put a line around it, but I don't want it to be quite as important as the title, so I don't want the line as dark. There you go. You have a quick and basic newsletter. You can, of course, customize this however you want. If you want to create a longer newsletter, just head over here and add another blank slide and keep constructing it element by element. You can also adjust the order over here by just dragging and dropping pages until you find an order you're happy with. You can also save this, not just for a one-time use, but to use as a template if you want to create more newsletters in the future. Ultimately, I think this is a great newsletter solution, especially if you're moving from a primarily Windows-based environment to a Google Apps for Education-based workspace. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.